Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a McNemer Bowker task, also known as a Bowker test, using Python 3 and specifically I'm using JupyterLab. Now this test could be used if you have two nominal paired variables, so each of the variable has the same categories. There are two types that um, two tests that are often used. Uh, either you're interested in the overall distribution change, so if the percentages from each category changed or not. That is something you could do with, for example, a Bobcar test. I have a separate video on that. Um, or you can do, uh, you can check if the changes are symmetric. So if people switch, for example, from A to B is the same as those who switch from B to A. That's done with a McNemer Bowker test, uh, or sometimes simply called Bowker test, and it's the one I'll show you in this video. To show you, I'll need an example. The example file I'll load as a pandas data frame, so I need pandas. Um, I've already installed pandas myself, so exclamation sign pip install pandas should work if you've never used it before and never installed it. Uh, and then you can import it if you want to follow along with your own data file. Um, then I can read the data file using CSV, read CSV, pandas pd now read CSV, and head will show me the first five records. So it only has two uh, variables in this case, otherwise you can just select the two variables of your interest. And it was before and after, and people could choose different brands, then perhaps saw a commercial from each brand, and then have to answer which one they liked afterwards. Uh, it's just example data. Uh, but it gives a nice ID. Then we begin with creating a cross table of this before and after, which can simply be done by using pandas cross tab, so that I actually also have a small little cross table. Now to perform the Bowker task, I can actually use the package uh, from Stats Models API, and that has a um, square table function, and that then has a symmetry uh, function. So I'll install, if you've never done that before, Stats Models API, and then I can load the square table. And then this actually use uh, the function, the symmetry. Uh, the cross table needs to be done first. So it, the cross table we already have, but Stats Models wants it then in a specific format. Um, There's what they call then the square table. And there is a default there, and that took me a while to figure out that if any of the cells is zero, like for example this one, it will inflate it to 0 0.5. Now um, I've checked with SPSS for example, they don't do that, so I've set that to false, and then the results should match the same as for example with SPSS. So if I load this one now, I get three numbers, the degrees of freedom, which is nice for the uh, reporting usually with a test you report the degrees of freedom if possible the p-value also known sometimes as significance um, if that's below 0.05 that's the usual threshold for some reason then um, it's considered a significant result and this is the statistic the I think it's a chi-square value yeah um, so if you would have a chi-square distribution with this value and this degrees of freedom, then you will get this p-value. Um, and that's actually, in a simple way, how you can perform this test. So in this case, it was significant, so there was a significant change in people switching. Now, in the appendix, I have actually uh, done everything, then trying to go over the formula. Uh, I'll leave a link to this Jupyter notebook in the description below. Uh, I'll I'll show it here, but uh, I won't discuss it. You can uh, read this all yourself if you really want to. But then um, you will see that the end result here will, in the end, be the same. I still use one package for the chi-square um, to get the p-value, and that's about it. Alright, I hope this video was helpful, and thank you for watching. 